You're watching Maine Biz Sunday, Maine's business news source. Maine is home to a number of high-profile global businesses. However, as with our majestic mountains and beautiful coastline, we often come to take those firms for granted. We drive by them every day without thinking about their significance to the U.S. and the global economy. One such world-leading company is Fairchild Semiconductor, with corporate offices and major manufacturing facilities in South Portland. Robin Goodwin, Executive Vice President of Global Manufacturing and Supply Chain Management for Fairchild, is here today to talk about the international marketplace and Fairchild's business strategy both globally and in Maine. Thanks and welcome for coming. Thank, glad you're here. Thank Appreciate you, Alan. It. Appreciate Pleasure it to be coming here. up. Uh, yeah, we, uh, as I was talking to you before the show. Uh, we do try to, uh, try to build into our series uh, with some of our larger employers that really are of these global import, uh, and, they're, and they're located right here in Maine. And a lot of times we don't we don't know exactly what they do, or we don't know enough about them. So we want to take the time to bring in the executives Absolutely. and talk about that. So I really appreciate that. Uh, this is from your website, just to give our viewers a kind of a frame of reference. Fairchild is regarded as the father of Silicon Valley with a history of leading edge innovation. This tradition continues today through the design and development of high performance, innovative, and energy efficient products. Established in 1957, the goal the goal of the original company was the development and production of silicon diffuse transistors and other semiconductor devices. In 1958, Fairchild developed the planar transistor, and with this, a new industry was born. Today, Fairchild is the leading global provider of semiconductor technology for the delivery of energy efficient analog, discrete, signal path, and optoelectric solutions. I, and I nod when I read all this, like I understand what that really means, but I'm <laughs> glad you're here to explain to me what exactly it is you do. Tell us more about the company, its size and location, and, and about the product. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of the history, maybe okay. to start, which is a fascinating one that probably not many people know. Um, there was a small lab in Palo Alto, California in the 1950s called Shockley Labs. And they were working on the sort of the invention in a lab environment of a semiconductor. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a group of gentlemen uh, that eventually became known as the Traitorous Eight. Uh, Robert Noyce was one mm -hmm. of those individuals who uh, people would know uh, right. from Elizabeth Noyce. Uh, and they decided to break out on their own for a variety of reasons. Uh, Noyce was a small town Iowa boy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm not sure exactly why he chose Maine, but what he wanted was something that was uh, an area that had a strong and stable workforce that was away from a major metropolitan center. And in 1962, they chose South Portland. Mm -hmm. And from there, um, the, it, it is now the longest single uh, continuously operating wafer fab in the world. But it's interesting. That seems like it's just the opposite of some of the, the business models we're always told to think about. Is One of the problems we have in Maine is we're so far away from kind of the other research and development corridors, uh, we, we're not a major, we don't have major uh, uh, it, cities here with a large workforce that we can draw on, technical uh, workforce, but that was something they were looking for, was they were more remote. It, yeah, there were two things. When, uh, one is uh, certainly a stable workforce, okay. uh, which is much more difficult to come by in, in Silicon Valley. In okay. fact, um, it's, it's costly, and uh, the turnover there, uh, the, in there, and in some other of uh, the uh, global, uh, like in China, yeah. uh, turnover rates are a problem there. In Maine, it's a stable really? workforce. And in fact, um, what we have here, and I think what has surprised people the more they've come, is we have a very good relationship with the University of Maine system. Orono has a, is an excellent pool yeah. for engineering resources. Great. The community college is also a very good relationship. We do internships, co-ops. Even during our worst downturn, we continued our co-op program. Mm -hmm. And we're uh, within an hour or two of the Boston market, right. which is a huge pool and of And that's resources. the other thing we need to th remember here in Maine, is that we're, it, while we're up in the corner of our map, when you look at the regional map, we're in the center, really, between yes, Boston and, and even the Atlantic Canada yep, provinces absolutely. Is, is also. Yep. Uh, okay, tell me a little bit more. How many total employees? This is a worldwide company, and where are you located? Can you give us an example? This is a global company. We have about 8,300 employees today. Okay. Uh, we are down, about 15% down. Of the 8,300, about 10% are in Maine. We have what I would consider three or four regional headquarters as opposed to a mm -hmm. single corporate mm -hmm. headquarters. South Portland is, is clearly one of those cores. Uh, San Jose, uh, California is the second. Singapore is really our Asian headquarters, and Germany is our European headquarters. That's the core. We have manufacturing facilities uh, in South Portland, uh, as well as uh, Utah, uh, Pennsylvania, South Korea, the Philippines, uh, China and Malaysia. And to show how global we are, we have design centers and sales offices uh, uh, in 17 other countries. Globally, with your, all of your locations, and obviously we're all very concerned about employment and keeping jobs here, where's the growth happening? I mean, probably no growth happening at all right now, but 
over the last several years, are we losing employees to other markets uh, because they're more affordable in your industry? It definitely the growth has been in Asia and specifically in China, okay. um, without question. Um, in terms of our sales base, 80% uh, of our sales are now in Asia, um, with mm -hmm. about 10% in the U.S. and uh, South America, largely okay. U.S., and about 10% in Europe. Of that 80%, three-quarters of it is in China directly. So that is where the growth has come from, without question. So in terms of our design centers, that is we tended to have more of a focus of putting them in Asia. Having said that, a lot of the the original development of the products that we put applications into are still U.S. based. So a lot of companies have their design centers in the U.S., some in Dallas, some in North Carolina, some in Silicon Valley. So there's still a need to have a strong presence with our design teams and our research teams as closely as possible to the customer. And a lot of those decisions may be made in the U.S. Mm -hmm. even though their manufacturing goes overseas. So mm -hmm. Um, the U.S. isn't going away. Okay. Um, we continue, in fact, uh, the, f the um, largest 8-inch uh, facility, 8-inch being the size of the wafers mm -hmm. that we have, and the investment we've made has been in South Portland. Okay. Um, we are looking at other potential investments in the U.S. So we are committed to staying in the U.S., um, but the challenges are greater than they are in uh, some other parts of the right, world. Right, so. and, and I want to, we just have a few seconds left, I want to talk about that and uh, about your ability to stay in Maine. I know you, you have done some downsides, you mentioned a 15% worldwide, yep. but that also related to so there were some layoffs in South Portland, yes. furlough days, those kinds of things, uh, pretty typical of many businesses right now. What do you see for the future for Maine and the product? You have, do you do design and manufacturing? Yeah, so, so, so what Maine offers is, is a unique combination that I think will, will bodes well for the future. We really have three distinct uh, parts of the company that are supported here. One is okay. our wafer fab facility on Western Avenue. That's the one that opened in 1962. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, one of our two largest divisions headquartered in South Portland that does all of our design activity. Mm -hmm. uh, they generate close to 50% of the uh, revenue for the company. They are based uh, here and very committed to this area. For the worldwide company? Yes. Yep. Uh, it's probably 40 to 50% and growing. That's um, good to know. And then we also have, on our Running Hill Road facility, we have a lot of the support infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, some of that includes uh, uh, corporate finance, uh, corporate I IT, uh, legal, uh, some of the supply chain activities and logistics. So, so there's three distinct work groups uh, in South Portland, all of which, by, ha by being diversified, it yep. gives us, uh, it, it, it mitigates the risk of will we, you know, will mm -hmm. we, you know, leave South Portland? The answer is no. So um, as things move and change, you'll be able, if one one part of that work group, one of those three workers doing better than others, we can keep employed. Yep, we need to, you know, okay. we need to adapt. So the support groups we probably won't invest a lot in. Yep. The R&D group uh, for that division, definitely we will. And slowly we are starting to add back the resources okay. that we let go in the uh, wafer fab, the well, manufacturing. Uh, that's good. And I'm gonna, I want to keep you around. We're going to do an afterthought segment that we're going to show on the web. And I want to talk more about that, kind yep. of the design group in particular, and, and also kind of how with your finger on the pulse of the global economy, kind of look into your crystal ball and tell us when this is all, when the recovery is really going to be I'll here. do my best okay, on that. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> so stick around. To learn more about Fair, Fairchild Semiconductor, go to fairchildsemi.com. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Main Biz Sunday is brought to you by Bangor Savings Bank, where you can enjoy free ATMs worldwide.